Hi, I'm Lisa Eddy, your host of the Sacred Beauty Lifestyle Podcast, where we reveal and explore both modern and ancient beauty secrets so you can radiate your true power and beauty both inside and out. Welcome. I've got a little housekeeping before we delve into this juicy solo episode today. I would like to invite you to help cultivate the content I share here with you by letting me know what you want me to speak on. That said, you may send questions, request a particular topic, or even nominate a guest that you would like for me to interview. You may do so by emailing me at hello at sacredbeautylifestyle.com. That's hello at sacredbeautylifestyle.com. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to another solo episode of the Sacred Beauty Lifestyle Podcast. And wow, it has been a minute since I have done a solo episode. So I am super happy to share with you today. And I am also super glad that you are here. A little housekeeping before we delve in. If you are listening or have been listening, welcome back. If you're new, welcome front. Just kidding. (laughs) Seriously, though, I am truly thrilled that you are here and choosing to spend your time here of all the places you could spend it. And I really want to give you what you want. That said, this is your personal invitation to make requests. Yes, I take requests. (laughs) You can send questions, topic ideas or suggestions, or even nominate a guest that you would like for me to interview. And you may do so by emailing me directly at hello at sacredbeautylifestyle.com. That's hello at sacredbeautylifestyle.com. Okay, so what brought me back here for another solo episode is that I really want to honor Women's History Month. So in this episode, I will be highlighting great women leaders of yesterday and today to pay homage to the women who have paved the way in creating safety, justice, and freedom, and a better life for others on a grand scale or even in their small business or in their parenting, as well as honoring all women who use their voice and power for good to educate, to honor, and to inspire others to rise up into the highest expression of service. Thank you. Deeply. In their honor, I am sharing some of the most impactful lessons, wisdom, gifts, and tips I have acquired over the many, many years as an entrepreneur and leader myself, from the women leaders and mentors that I follow, those that I have been inspired by or have personally hired. I cannot tell you the number of healers, mentors, psychics, coaches, therapists, and leaders that I've hired on this journey of personal and professional spiritual, and business development. I have been walking the path of entrepreneurship for about 25 years now. So if you've been following me for any time, you may have heard me, or if you've heard my story, you may have heard me joke that I've hired all the coaches. It's not actually a joke because I actually have. (laughs) And because I love supporting women and the world needs your light and voice more than ever, I am passing this info on to you. So these tips are like gold, which happens to be my favorite color, rich insights and shortcuts that I have paid thousands of dollars for. I actually wish that I could tally up and go back and really figure out how much money I've spent on my education and mentorship in this time as a woman in business, because I am certain it must be over a hundred thousand. Oh, shout. <laughs> as the saying goes, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So you can't really separate your personal essence from your business essence, especially if you're listening here and you're an entrepreneur and you don't want to, that is your magic. The point is these tips spill over into every area of your life. If you are are a professional mom or a human having interactions or relationships with anyone, these are helpful. When we are equipped with useful tools and wisdom, we can make better choices in the moment when it matters most, whether it be in our business, in our relationships, or in everyday life. So these nuggets have been incredibly impactful for me and really have 
helped shape and guide me over the years, especially when I have been stretching and growing, which seems to be like all the time lately, because the world we are living in is so intense these days. And we are being called to rise up now. And I suspect this will be the same for you, that you will find these truly impactful. And you too, listening here, perhaps you're thinking like, uh, yeah, this has been a time, right? as we are recording this in March of 2023, just to document that. So you may want to grab a pen and paper or pull up the notes on your phone if you're in a place where you can jot these down. There is nothing like getting support from those of us who have walked through the fire in advance of us to hold our hands and guide us through the trenches. As I always say, it really does take a village. And for those of you listening who are on a spiritual path, You know, when you sign up to walk this path, you open yourself up to healing deep wounds, sometimes yours and sometimes ancestral wounds or a combination thereof. I love supporting you on this journey and I want to take this time to acknowledge and honor all of the great mentors and the wisdom they have shared as well as the ancestors who have come before us with incredible courage and heart firing the way, risking their lives at a time so that we could have the right to vote even or abolish segregation and preserve rights for women and black women. So I also wanted to really honor that. I'm going to start with some of the coaches I have personally hired and then move into those that have inspired the masses. I could not share the women that have shaped me without sharing Mama Jones with you. Mama Jones, also known as Anne Marie Jones, was a mother to everyone. My daughter actually said that to me once and I thought, wow, best compliment ever. Mama Jones worked at the junior high in San Bruno, California, where I went to high school. And she really did take all of us in as her children. She was such a community builder and a lover of people. And she made everyone feel like you were the most important person. If she was with you, she listened to you. She opened her heart and her home to everyone. And she was such an adventurous soul and spirit. So, so many lessons and gifts that she shared with the world. And one of the things that stands out to me because of us both having such a passion for the adventurous lifestyle and travel I was sharing something on Facebook at one point years ago when she was still with us and it was about my travels and journeys and she just loved it. It could, you could tell it, these kinds of things lit her up and she said, open up to the world and the world opens up to you. And it is so true. And that is what I have found time and time again, when you are open to the exchange of giving and receiving and in the flow of life, you are guided. So when you open yourself up to the world, the world opens up to meet you. And going into the mentors that I have hired over the years, one of my first long-term spiritual coaches that I hired for years, and actually I'm still in contact with her, is Patricia Westerfield. And I don't know that I'm going to do her title justice because she does so much I would say a transformational energy worker. She does bioenergetics. I've had past lives bleed through in uh, some of our sessions. She has coached me in all the ways, personally, spiritually, business-wise, relationships, you name it. And one of the things I learned from Patricia was how to use a pendulum And that really dates how long ago this was. This was at least 20 years ago, I started working with Patricia and, you know, really understanding energy and how it works and listening and trusting your body. I think she then even taught me how to use my body as a pendulum and the different ways that I would be in inquiry with my body, which were everything from starting to ask my body what it wanted to eat She was guiding me through this whole process years ago where I would go to the grocery store and at some point I'd use a pendulum and then I just got good enough to where I could feel the energy of the food. 
uh, but such an impactful, important gift and lesson I learned from her. Another one is there is nothing more important than I feel good. Boy, did she stress this one. There is nothing more important than I feel good. So for those of you listening right now, there is nothing more important than you feel good. So if you're on a topic that feels crappy, the most important thing you could do is get off of that topic if it's too loaded. This goes to some of the Abraham Hicks teachings as well, that if you cannot get into the flow because it's there's a lot of charge in the wrong direction, that get off the topic and start building yourself into a better feeling place by coming back to the simplest thing that you know, the simplest truth that you know, looking at a tree and appreciating the beauty, appreciating the beauty of a painting on the wall, you know, your breath, like that simple. She also taught me how to identify my emotions and how to let myself feel them. Because I wasn't really taught that like many of us, it's changing now, but I'm going to be 51 here in 2023. So it wasn't something that was fostered, I'd say, as much on a you know large scale in families or in school in my day. So that was so shocking even to realize what I was feeling at times when I wouldn't be able to identify it. Patricia, I cannot thank you enough for all of the love and guidance and encouragement. I feel like she took me on like a child in a way, like, like a loving mother would, like she cares about me that much. And this is part of the benefit of hiring women coaches <laughs> because we really do love so big and not that men don't. It's just a different way of nurturing, right? Okay. So Mary Brady, oh my gosh, Mary is so magical. Mary looks like Glenda the Good Witch. <laughs> And the name Mary is so fitting for her because she's like everybody's mother, like Mother Mary. It's just incredibly fitting. And I got connected with Mary through a group of colleagues that are in the healing arts and everyone was seeing Mary. She's a Reiki master and teacher and into it and coach. And so finally, the time aligned, I had been wanting to meet with her for years when I was pregnant. And so I started connecting with Mary, which was really beautiful. She was able to guide me during my pregnancy. And I actually took the Reiki teacher training while pregnant. And Mary just loved me up and nurtured me so deeply. And one of the things that she taught me was to follow the breadcrumbs of joy. She always says that, like, that's how you know you were on track by following what lights you up. And also along the same line is that when you are in sync, synchronicity happens. I think that's another podcast episode I'll be launching soon. When you are in sync, synchronicity happens. And that's how you can kind of tell when you're in the flow. It's like, ah, oh, I'm meeting the right people. You know, things are aligning with ease. And also, of course, how to manage and channel energy that is not your own, but the universal life force that we all have access to when we are trained in Reiki. It's kind of nice because you get attuned to working with a higher energy, um, an infinite flow of energy versus depleting your own, which is where a lot of healers, self-included, went wrong or astray, let's say in the beginning of my career doing hands-on healing, I was giving so much of myself and depleting my resources versus tapping in to the everlasting uh, source of, of, of light and love and energy that we can all have access to with training. You know, I also have to give a shout out to a coach that I'm just going to call CL. I'm not going to name her. And I'm just going to say what I learned from her was to really trust my wisdom and stop going outside of myself so much, constantly looking for validation. That is an ongoing lesson that, you know, I've been working out, but the reason it really came up with her so much is because some coaches kind of want you to be dependent on them versus really empowering you to learn how to check in and tap in and do these things. Instead of teaching you, it's more like making you dependent 
And so that was really interesting that I actually had to break up with her to learn to listen to myself and to trust myself more. Very valuable. Moving right along is Holly Shantara. Oh my goodness. I have been working with Holly on and off for years as well. I think 2016, 2017, I think 2016 perhaps. And Holly has been a leading support system uh, during a current crisis that started for me in May 2021, an absolute guiding light and a very important consultant for me navigating this journey, again, of trusting self and trusting my journey and trusting in God, and the higher power, the power of prayer. I've learned so much from her. What's interesting is one of the things that Holly says, which you may have heard before, is new level, new devil. That's something that's kind of known as we're evolving in business or as we're evolving in, uh, you know, our spiritual path, it's something that kind of gets thrown out there. And I remember her saying that, and it's funny because that also reminds me of a story Denzel Washington in an interview shared that if the devil's not coming for you, you're doing something wrong. So when we are called into purpose, that reminds me of another friend who was a pastor at some point in his life, beautiful coach, a heart centered man, he said to me, oh, Lisa, you've been called to purpose. When I speak of this crisis that happened May 2021, we often as light beings get attacked when we start to really shine and stand up to serve the world. So that said, Holly really helped me learn how to know myself in the face of darkness like you cannot be threatened by the darkness. You have to really know who you are so that they cannot mess with you and not be scared of them. That was a gift I learned from Holly. Mm. And Kathleen Green. Kathleen is a best kept secret. She's a Qigong practitioner and teacher and energy and crystal healer and again, I've learned so many things from this powerful badass woman. She, I learned how to program crystals, how to slay dragons. <laughs> and most importantly, the importance of protecting yourself, protecting your energy and protecting yourself, protecting your light and the rituals that it takes, the daily essential steps we must take as we rise up and become more visible. Another one, and last but not least, of the personal mentors that I am giving shouts out and tributes to is Marsha Martin. Dr. Marsha Martin is a heart healer. And boy, does this woman know how to heal the heart and hold such a powerful presence with such love. And she really knows when we are going through tough times, who to call on for what and when. And I say that meaning that we live in a free will universe. So we need to ask for help, which I've known. I've known this, though it's hard to remember when you're in crises to do this sometimes when it's most important, go figure. But what was different and impactful that I learned with Marsha that I want to note is that it's knowing who to call when, because there are different archangels and different deities and different guides and, you know, saints, etc., that help us with certain tasks, tasks that can be really difficult for us are very easy for them. Let me give you an example. Ganesh. I'm looking up at a Ganesh statue I have. I'm not going to get it because I'd have to stand up. But for those of you who are watching on video that you saw me looking at, <laughs> I have this beautiful gold, my favorite color, Ganesh statue. Ganesh is the remover of obstacles is what we call Ganesh for. So knowing if there is something in your way on a path that you want to clear the way. Think of an elephant being able to stomp through and clearing everything out of the way. That's Ganesh's magic. So they actually love when we call on them to utilize their skills because 
we're all on a never ending journey of evolution, whether we're in physical form or whether we're in the spirit world, we're constantly still evolving. And so Ganesh is still evolving. And so when we use Ganesh, we elevate Ganesh and we elevate and Ganesh elevates us. So it's a win-win, just like when anybody helps you, like when Marsha's serving me, she's serving herself. Because when we hold the light, when you are either, if you're listening and you're a mom or you're a business owner, however you serve the world through whatever you do on a regular basis, when you bless others, you are blessed. That's how it works. So really important to know who to call on when for the win-win for all. And then I want to move into some of the famous leaders that I have found so impactful and a total guiding light. And one of them is Marianne Williamson. And I'm not going to recite the whole poem, but I will share it in my Sacred Beauty Collective Facebook group, which I'll leave in the show notes for you all. One of the things that she shares that's so important is that we're actually more afraid of our light than our darkness. We're more afraid of our light than our darkness. Isn't that fascinating? And that we are all meant to shine as children do. We're all meant to shine as children do. And it's just such a great reminder. Like it truly is. I don't believe in growing up or getting older, really. I don't believe in aging in the typical way that we are taught that we need to or should, whether it's, you know, through back pains or different ailments or disease and the same way that we can keep our joyous, childlike, playful state and let ourselves shine like children do is available to all of us. And again, that helps serve the planet when we are letting our light shine. She has so many great books, by the way. I think I'll mention a couple of them in the show notes as well that were super impactful for me. One is a return to love. I'll tell you right out the gate that it's a red cover, return to love. And then there's another one about women. It's almost like a women coming of age book that I think everyone should read. And the, the name is uh, is um, evading me right now. Okay. So moving right along, Brene Brown. I mean, come on. This woman is absolutely incredible. I love that she challenges so many of the toxic mistruths that we have subscribed to as a culture that are holding us down. Like so many of us, especially women, are taught to change ourselves to fit in. And true belonging doesn't require you to change who you are. It requires you to be who you are. It is such a beautiful quote and a reminder that you are perfectly imperfect just as you are. And it is essential actually that you be who you are. Otherwise you rob the rest of the population of the piece of the puzzle that you are meant to bring here because we all are bringing a certain piece of the puzzle. So it's actually your responsibility to rise up into all you are meant to be, not just for yourself, but for those around you, for the rest of the world, for the legacy that we leave behind. Another one for you. I have a couple of Brene Brown's quotes because I just love them so much. Vulnerability. Vulnerability sounds like truth and feels like courage. Truth and courage aren't always comfortable, but they're never weakness. This is something that, thank goddess, we are finally talking about because we have been trained and misled and misinformed, most of us, about vulnerability. I know I certainly was and have had an incredibly hard time with it in ways like many of us. And actually, Patricia the mentor I was speaking about earlier taught me that, that weakness, that rather taught me that our vulnerability is actually a strength and not a weakness. And that was like mind boggling back then. And now we're hearing more and more of this coming forth and being open and real. And thank God, thank you for all of you who are doing the work and being vulnerable and courageous. We need you. Thank you. I see you. This one of her quotes is one of my favorites, so I saved it for last, which is, if you're not in the arena also getting your ass kicked, I'm not interested in your feedback. Okay, thank you. Bye. (laughs) Right? I love this quote. This is a play on the um, famous quote by Theodore Roosevelt, and it's such a powerful reminder that we don't have to take the opinions of others who are 
not at the same level trying to, you know, as she says, give advice from the cheap seats, right? You're only, she's only available for those of you, for those of us who are also in the arena. And it's just such a great reminder to not pay attention, not give a shit what anybody else is saying or doing or thinking about you, unless it's constructive criticism from somebody who's walking side by side with you and wants to elevate you as well. Oh, where else to go from here? You know, Harriet Tubman, I was so moved to watch the movie. I don't know if you've watched the movie or, the, you know, really are super familiar with the details of the story of Harriet Tubman, the incredibly brave soul who freed the slaves, who found her way to freedom and then went back time and time again to make the hard trip in the Underground Railroad to free others. And one of the quotes that she said was, I would give every drop of blood in my veins to free them. Like that level of service and conviction, I suspect could only come from somebody who has endured great pain. That is the beauty of trying times, the com- level of compassion and understanding and desire to serve next level, total elevation. Thank you, Harriet Tubman, for being such an incredible, brave, beautiful, strong, empowering, inspiring leader. And Frida Gallo, I have to mention Frida. God, I love that woman. I was recently in Mexico and visited her house. I want to go back. And I love to wear the headpieces she wore. She was such a unique woman. And I think that's one of the things I love about her most is her unique personality that came through that, you know, she really honored and loved her culture at the time when people of her status, the other artists that could have afforded to were wearing uh, European clothing and fashion, because that was like the in thing to do when she instead was honoring Mexican culture where she came from. And you know, honoring the ancestors. I love that. I learned when I was there that she was the one who brought these gorgeous headpieces that you'll now see as a huge part of the Dio de los Muertos attire in Mexico City. That was her. And nobody was doing it back then. She brought that in, you know, from, I think it was from the past, but she was the only one wearing it. So I just love that she was totally herself. She was true to her convictions and she took her pain and made beauty for the world. Like, yeah, I mean, talk about composting your pain into beauty and your troubles or, you know, uh, into triumph. Thank you. And so I will leave this quote here for you to ponder. Feet, what do I need you for when I have wings to fly? Isn't that such a great question? What do I need you for when I have wings to fly? A good reminder. Mm, And Maya Angelou, I mean, God, I wish I could go back in time and be a fly on the wall in every room that woman spoke in. I'm constantly inspired by her. I constantly watch, you know, videos and interviews I can get my hands on with this woman. And one of the things I love about her is how she really empowered women to use their voice. I mean, look at what she went through having lost her voice. If you know her story of being raped and such at like a very young age, I believe at the age of seven and then not speaking for like five years, seven years. I can't recall right now the details, but it was quite a long time and just studying. I mean, talk about the power of voice when she finally came out. And here is one of the quotes that stands out to me to honor this queen is each time A woman stands up for herself without knowing it possibly, without claiming it, she stands up for all women. And it's really when we rise up, we invite others to do the same. And we are all in this together. We are all one. And the power of your voice and using it for good cannot be overstated. You know, it's, it's inspirational to stand up for what you believe is right, to stand up for those who cannot stand up for themselves. And don't be afraid to use your anger. That's another thing I learned from her. I remember an interview, I think she was with Chris Rock, if I have this right, years ago in an interview, she said, be angry, use it. 
And, you know, we're often taught to not be angry and to stuff it, but anger is an indicator of something that you're passionate about that needs to change. That's not right. Right. So that is where we can channel it to make great impact. So I would say, follow it, use it just like she says. And last but not least is Joan of Arc. Can you believe that little powerhouse? What was she, 14, 15 years old? Again, I'm guessing. And she was a young teenager in her time. What a woman of fierce conviction, faith, and courage. So I will leave you with this thought as she was directing the men on the battlefield which doesn't it feel like a battlefield sometime these days? <laughs> Go boldly. Go boldly. Go boldly. That, all of that. And I want to hear your favorite tip. So I am going to include in the show notes, as mentioned before, the link to the Sacred Beauty Collective on Facebook. And we will have a post created posing this very question, what is your favorite tip or pointer that you have learned from a woman, mentor, mother, leader in your life that has been so impactful so that we can share them and let their legacies live on? So go to the Facebook group, Sacred Beauty Collective on Facebook and share your tip in the post that says, what is your favorite tip? Thank you so much for listening. I hope this has served you immensely. Big love.